Hi there, it's Mario here. In today's session, we're going to continue with our Pong game. We're gonna add some new functionality and we're gonna fix some bugs. Let's have a look and see what we're gonna be building. This is the game that we ended up with at the end of the first session. So a few things that we're gonna fix in this one. Uh, at the moment, there's, um, well, you just saw the, <laughs> the ball getting stuck. So that's definitely one thing we're gonna be fixing, the ball getting stuck there. Uh, the controls are something we're going to modify a bit. Um, it doesn't really behave very well when you're holding uh, down up and then start holding uh, down. So when you hold them at the same time. Uh, so we're going to make that a little bit nicer. And then uh, we're also going to change the angle of the ball. So at the moment it always hits, uh, no matter where you hit on the paddle, it always goes at the same angle. So uh, that's going to make it interesting depending on where you hit on the paddle the ball will go in a different location. And then finally, we're just gonna add some uh, music and some sound effects, and we're just gonna draw a nice little line um, in the center of our uh, game, just to make it look a bit nicer. So uh, let's have a look at some code. This is the project, how we finished up at the end of the first episode. I have added some sound files here though. We've got WAV files. so. The ping and the pong are just different sounds that the paddles will make. So when either the paddle hits it or the top and the bottom and the sides, there'll be two different sounds. And then we've got some uh, background music, which we're gonna loop um, and just play while the game's going. To get started, I'm just gonna copy this version one file to version two, and that's where we're gonna make our changes. And the first thing that we're gonna look at is just the control. So like I mentioned earlier, if you hold down one of the keys, you're holding up, you start holding down, it doesn't really behave very well. So we're gonna change that a little bit. So here we're hooking on to two of the different key press events. So we've got key down and uh, key up. So key down uh, fires once when you press the key down and key up when you let go, but um, that doesn't really play nice because the issue is when we fire a key down, so let's say you hold one key, hold the next, you fire two key downs, and then the key up will fire, and that means that uh, it'll stop moving entirely, which is not what we want. We want to continue in the direction that you've kind of let go of. Pretty easy way to fix this is just to change this key down event. So there's another event called key held, and as you hold down a key, it will continuously fire uh, every single frame for that key that we're holding down. So that means that if we're holding down both the up and the down, we let go of one of them, it'll continue to fire uh, that event for us. Let's test it out. I'm gonna run version two of the program. It's gonna be a bit hard to show you, but uh, I'm letting go. Uh, so I'm continuously holding down and I'm pressing the up and then letting go. And you can see it's continuously going down, which is kind of what you want. And then this is the uh, reverse where I'm holding down uh, and then pressing up a bit and letting go. And you can see uh, that's working much better now. So the next thing we're gonna do is just focus on this ball getting stuck. Um, so the reason why that's happening is when we hit the, when the paddle hits the ball, we tell the ball to go the reverse direction. And depending on the angle, so you can see here in this example, we're kind of hitting the bottom of the paddle. Uh, and that means that it's actually not getting uh, shot off further enough to the right. So it will move one frame, it'll still be contacting the paddle and then it will get sent in the reverse direction. So it's continuously getting sent left and right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna register which paddle um, hit the ball last and we're only gonna allow the other paddle to hit it. So we're gonna say either the left side or the right side hit, hit it last um, and then only the opposing one can hit it. So let's have a look at our code here. So at the moment we are registering uh, the left and right for the player and the opponent here. So we need to actually uh, expose this information because we're gonna to need to use that um, when our ball gets struck to know which side it was. So let's have a look at our player class and see what we do with that information. Uh, sorry, our paddle class. So you can see we pass in this side, so that was where we were passing in left or right. Um, and at the moment, we simply change the X value uh, of the paddle, but we don't record that side. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hold on to this side into a 
instance variable like this. Uh, and we're going to allow this to be accessed um, uh, outside of the, this class because we need it when we're, we're striking that ball. So I'm going to say um, attribute reader side, and that will allow us to call um, side um, and access this uh, uh, value. So the place where we need this is in this uh, bounce method. So at the moment, the bounce doesn't know what it's bouncing off, but it will be either the player or the opponent. So um, in a second, we're going to modify that to receive the paddle that's been hit uh, so that it can figure out if it's the same paddle that's tried to hit it twice. Uh, so here uh, we call that bounce method uh, and you can see we're calling that if the player has hit the ball or the opponent has hit the ball. So we're going to need to break this out a little bit because if the players hit the ball, we're going to need to pass the player to bounce. And if the opponents hit the ball, we're going to pass the opponent to bounce. So let's make two uh, if statements here. Uh, and so I might just change the name of this just to make a bit more sense. I'm going to say bounce off, so bounce off of, and here we're bouncing off of the player, and here we're bouncing off the opponent. Okay, so let's modify that bounce method now. Okay, so the bounce off is going to get the paddle uh, that it's been hit, and now on that paddle, because we made that attribute reader earlier, um, we made this... Uh, reader, we can call side, we can call that now in our paddle, we can call paddle.side and we'll either receive left um, or right, which is going to be great. So in our ball, we need a starting value um, to see who is hit at last. No, actually we don't. I don't think we need to. Um, we can simply set it here. So we're going to say um, uh, if um, last hit paddle last hit side is the same as the paddle dot side. Uh, if it's not the same, so if it's a different paddle, then we will allow it to register. And if it's the same paddle, we just won't do anything. Uh, and then we're gonna need to set last hit side, paddle dot side. Cool, so uh, we haven't set an initial value. So the first time this one's last hit side will be nil. Um, which is fine because it means that um, if we sent the ball left initially or right initially, uh, it, it will work fine. The first hit will, will register. We only sent it left currently towards the player, but that's fine. So let's run the program and let's see if I can get into that spot. Okay. Um, so you can see here now um, when the, the ball does contact the very end of the paddle, um, it's not getting stuck into it. Um, we could, if we wanted to, change it up a little bit because you can kind of see that if you kind of hit the back side of the paddle, um, that still does register. Um, and I don't think that probably should, but um, I think that's definitely an improvement for the moment. So maybe we can move on to the next thing. So the next thing I want to change is the angle of the ball. So regardless of where I hit the ball, um, the angle is always the same because we're not changing the um, x and y velocity, we're only just reversing the x uh, so the direction gets uh, mirrored. Uh, but it'd be really cool to change that angle based on where we're hitting it on the paddle. So the first thing is to actually figure out uh, where the ball is striking the paddle. And to start off, we're going to generate a value from zero. So zero being that the ball is striking the top of the paddle and one that we're uh, striking the, uh, the bottom of the paddle. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. So in this bounce off, um, here is where we're hitting uh, the, the ball is striking the paddle. And so we've got access to our paddle and access to the, um, the ball as well. So we want to look at the, let's say, the top of the ball. And the way we get the top of it is by calling um, y1 on it. So here um, uh, we've got access to the shape. So the shape is actually the square that is uh, drawn for the ball. And so that's what we're going to call y1 on. Um, so y1 being the top left coordinate of it. Um, here, and that'll give us the, the height of that uh, 
of the ball. And then the next thing to do is get the height of the uh, paddle. Um, and at the moment, we don't currently expose that um, from the paddle. So uh, what we might do is just make a new method here. Uh, we'll call it Y1 and uh, we're just simply going to uh, expose the, uh, again, the shape Y, Y1. Uh, so that means now on our paddle object, we can call Y1 uh, and we will get the, this value here of the underlying shape behind it. Cool, so now we've got our sh the X, the, sorry, the Y position of our paddle. We've got the Y position of our um, ball. Uh, now we can kind of compare them. So the next thing is just to figure out the height as well of the paddle because um, the uh, we want to figure out what percentage uh, of uh, the the height of it it's down from the, the, the ball is down so uh, we also need to be able to grab the height um, from the paddle um, so that's paddle height of course we've already got access to that great so the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to uh, take away so we got the shape y1 that's the y position of the ball we're going to take that away from the Y1 of the paddle. Presumably the paddle should be higher uh, if they're colliding. And we're going to divide that by the uh, paddle height. Okay. Uh, so let's call that... Uh, let's just call it position. Okay. So this position here is going to give us a value between 0 and 1. Now in Ruby, if we divide by a whole number... Uh, we don't get the division that you would expect. So let's say um, we're dividing, let's say the, we've hit 30 up. So thir we've uh, 30 down the paddle and the paddle's 150 high. Uh, if we divide those two, you see we're getting zero. And the reason is uh, Ruby does whole number division. So if I do five divided by two, give us the whole number and then remove the remainder. So again, if we're doing 30 by 150, if we want the fraction, we need to have either of those sides be a floating point number. So if I put 0 0.0 on the right, that makes the right-hand side a floating point number. And you can see we get 0.2, which is what we want. Um, another way to do that is just by calling 2f on that number. And you can see again, we get 0.2, which is what we want. And that's what we're gonna do in our example. I'm gonna convert this height into a floating point uh, number. And that means now that we should get our angle. So the first thing we're gonna do is print our position. And I'm gonna clear this out so I get a bit of room. Okay. Okay, so we've got a, an exception in our bounce off method, undefined method Y1 for nil class. Uh, okay, so I've just put a at there, so we want to use this paddle, not an instance variable. So let's see if that fixes that problem. Okay, so I'm going to move this out so we can see what's happening. So you can see we're getting this value 0.99. I've just hit it on the very bottom. If I can try and hit it at the top, um, you can see I'm getting a value that's a little bit below zero. So um, the reason why that's happening is the ball's a little bit higher than the paddle. In those circumstances, what I actually kind of want to do is I want to say don't really go below uh, zero. So those values here, uh, negative 0 0.93, we want to turn that into a um, into a zero. Uh, and we would want the same thing if we went slightly below the paddle. We don't want any numbers that are more than one. So we want, we want to constrict that range between zero and one. I'm going to stop the program now. So what we can do is in Ruby, there's a method called clamp. I'm going to say position.clamp. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a minimum and a maximum value. Uh, now, if we hit the ball at the very, very top, we actually don't want um, to launch it at a really shallow angle because it'll take such a long time to get to the other side. So rather than having a value that's zero, um, which wouldn't provide us uh, any kind of vertical movement, we want to have a shallower, shallower angle, right? So if we say, if you hit at the very top, um, rather than launching it kind of vertically, 
uh, which it's going to want to do, we want a, a little bit of a shallow angle. So I'm going to say clamp it at 0.2. So the minimum value we can have is 0.2. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to have 0.8 uh, as the uh, maximum value that we can go. So I'm going to say position equals position clamp. Okay. Okay, so you can see I'm hitting at the very bottom and I'm getting 0.8, that's really good. And then if I hit at the very top, I'm getting 0.2. So that's the minimum and the maximum value uh, that we are getting, that's really, really good. And if we hit it roughly in the middle, uh, my name's pretty terrible though. There we go, uh, we're getting about 0.5. So that's working really well. So the next thing to do is to use that value to influence uh, what happens to the X and Y velocity. So it's gonna get a little bit more complicated than that. So uh, we're gonna to need to use some basic uh, trigonometry. So we're gonna to need to use a um, sine uh, and a cosine wave. Uh, and the way this is gonna work is um, we're going to provide um, this um, position. So this is gonna become the angle that we're hitting at. So at the moment, the uh, values are 0.2 to 0.8. Uh, we're gonna multiply that um, by uh, pi to get a number, um, again, between uh, roughly zero and um, uh, pi is 3.14, so somewhere in that range. Uh, and then we're gonna use the sine and the cosine to figure out um, what's the x component of that and what's the y component of that. So, um, I'm gonna, it's gonna be different depending on what side we're at um, because if you're hitting the left paddle, um, you wanna launch the ball to the right uh, and vice versa. So we're just gonna start off uh, with the left one. So only if the left paddle hits. Uh, so we're gonna change this X velocity uh, and that's gonna be the sine. Uh, and we're gonna use this position. So this position is actually gonna be an angle. Um, uh, and then we also need to multiply, actually let's call this position, and then we'll multiply that by pi. Uh, and so if we're on the left side, we're gonna use the sine wave uh, and then put in our angle. Um, and we're going to uh, multiply that. Um, so this speed here, so previously we wouldn't really lose the speed because the X velocity was always a speed, but either positive or negative. Uh, now we're actually gonna to need to hold on to it because we're gonna to need to reuse it when we figure out what our X velocity uh, or our Y velocity are. So I'm gonna say speed equals speed. So now we can use that. So um, the X velocity is this times the uh, initial speed that we set. Okay. Uh, and our Y velocity is the cosine. Uh, times um, the speed. Okay, um, and I know um, from fiddling around with this earlier, I know that I need a negative here um, uh, for it to work. Otherwise it's gonna go um, in the wrong uh, direction uh, vertically. Um, so let's try that out and see what happens. Okay, so I don't think that's working just yet. You can see that the, uh, the ball is going through um, uh, the paddle on the wrong side. So I think we've just got something mixed up uh, here. Ah, I can see. So we're keeping our X velocity uh, here. So we just need to remove um, this. I think that's why it's going in the wrong direction. Okay, so you can see here, um, now depending on where I'm hitting the ball, it seems to be respecting that angle. So hopefully I can hit it. And then if we hit it roughly in the middle, um, you can see it's kind of going straight. So that looks like it's working uh, a lot better. Uh, I think the uh, original Pong might have slightly uh, different dynamics, but I'm pretty happy with that, how it works uh, for the moment. So let's see if we can get the opponent um, doing the right thing as well. So if they're on the right, the um, X and Y velocities will work out pretty similarly, um, but we just need to flip them around because the um, 
uh, x component will be in the reverse direction. So rather than this being um, sine here, we're going to use the negative of that value. And then here uh, with the cosine, I think we can remove that. Let's try that out. Okay, so already you can see it's a bit more dynamic. Awesome, that looks like it's working well. So the next thing that I wanna do is just a bit about the opponent's movement. So I think in a later tutorial, we might be able to make them a bit smarter, but um, for the moment, I just wanna fix a um, pretty simple um, bug in their behavior. So you can kind of see it now when you hit the ball pretty straight um, because the opponent's a bit faster than the ball. Um, you can see it's just jittering a bit. And the reason is that the um, the paddle's kind of moving, um, oscillating uh, on kind of one point, um, moving itself up and down one, uh, one pixel. And so I think the way we can solve that is just by telling it that if it's kind of close to the center of the ball, then um, that's okay. It doesn't need to necessarily um, be exactly on that point. So hopefully that should be a, pretty um, uh, quick fix. Let's have a look. So we need to find the code um, for our opponent movement. Um, and I think that's here in our trackball. Uh, and so the real simple fix is we're just going to add, um, uh, uh, we're just going to add a number here to the ball to say, um, at the moment we're saying if the ball, uh, if the middle point of the ball is higher than the um, uh, middle of our paddle, then move the paddle up. Uh, and then here we're saying if the middle ball, middle point of the ball is lower than our paddle, then move the paddle down. Um, and so if we simply add a, um, let's say jitter correction. So this will just be a number. I'm gonna make it, um, let's say four. So that'll be four pixels. So if we're within four pixels, um, uh, don't bother about moving, right? Only move um, when you kind of uh, get there. Um, and then here, we're going to uh, do the same thing, but we're gonna take jitter correction. What that does, it makes a four pixel gap where the, uh, the paddle won't move between. It'll kind of settle into, and hopefully it'll remove a bit of that jitter. So let's try that out. So the trick now is that I've got to hit it pretty straight, which I'm not managing to do. There you go. So you can see now the movement of the opponent looks a lot better. You can probably play around with that jitter correction value. Um, try and raise it if you want the opponent to be smoother or um, lower it if the opponent's not moving uh, enough to get the ball. I think definitely it'd be nice to, um, in a future episode, calculate the trajectory of the ball, um, figure out where it's gonna end up on that right-hand side. And then from there, we can automatically move the opponent to get there and then make them, you know, for example, give them a random amount of thinking time, just like a human would. So I think definitely in a future episode, we can uh, make the AI a bit smarter, but um, for the moment, I'm just happy that they're not um, jittering around so much. Great, so the next thing is um, uh, music. So let's have a look and see what we've uh, got in Ruby 2D uh, for sound. So if we head over the audio here, um, you can see that there's two kinds of uh, audio uh, objects that we can use. Um, we can use uh, sound for short clips, which we're gonna use when the uh, paddle uh, contacts the ball and when the um, uh, ball hits either of the um, the sides, the top of the bottom, and then the music we're gonna use um, for our, our music that's going to loop over. So let's have a look at our code. So um, in this folder, um, we've got some, uh, this music file. So the first thing we're gonna do is just play uh, this mu music in the background. So above this uh, paddle, I'm just gonna create a new, uh, music object. Actually, I can put it down. I'm gonna put it here with the other objects. So um, let's create music. So music equals music dot new. I just need the name of that 
file, so music.wave. Uh, you can use uh, MP3s and some other file types, so um, you can check the Ruby 2D documentation uh, for what audio types you can play. Uh, and then we're gonna say music.loop equals true. So the clip I've got is only a few seconds long, and so we're gonna just play it in a continuous loop. And then we're gonna hit play. And then see what happens. Awesome. Um, so that's some background music. And then the next step is have the sounds uh, when we're contacting uh, either of these, these paddles. So the sounds we are going to put at the very top because we'll need to reference them. So we've got our Pong sound. So there's two files, the Pong and the Ping equals sound.new pong.wave uh, and then the ping sound is another sound okay uh, and so we're going to need to uh, play these um, uh, when things happen so um, when we um, bounce um, we're going to um, play uh, play that sound and then when we hit the um, uh, so when we bounce on the player sorry we'll play the um, the uh, ping sound, and then when we bounce off the top of the bottom, we'll play the pong sound. Okay, so player um, hit ball or opponent hit ball. So we're going to ping sound dot play. Uh, the opponent can get the same sound, so you could choose to have a different sound for each of those. Um, and then this pong sound, we're going to play. Uh, when we bounce off the walls. So I think in the ball class. Okay, here we're gonna play that sound. So Pong sound when we uh, hit the bottom or the top. Let's give that a go. Awesome. Great, so the last thing to do is simply just draw a line uh, between our two players. So uh, that's what we're gonna move on to. So to do that, I'm gonna create a new class uh, because we're gonna need to create a few different shapes on the screen. We're simply just gonna draw rectangles um, which will make up that line. Dividing line, okay. So we're gonna need to set the um, width of the line. So we might set to something like, let's say 10 to start with. Um, we're gonna just pick a height for each of those. Um, let's say 20 is fine. Uh, and we're gonna set the number of lines we have. So number of lines, uh, let's start off with 10. And we're gonna make a draw method Okay, um, and we're gonna draw each of these lines. So we can loop around this many times. Okay, uh, and we're just gonna use a rectangle. So our rectangle's X position um, is going to be the width of the window um, halved, as well as the uh, width of our actual dividing line halved. So the window width plus the, this width here uh, divided by two. So our x is window.width plus width divided by two. Uh, our y position is gonna be something similar, but we're gonna need to take in which line we are. So the first one we're gonna start at the top um, and go down. So um, if we grab the height of the window and divide it by the number of lines, times it by i. I'm just gonna set wrap just so we can, uh, we can see as this goes off. So the, so that's the y. So the y will be different for each of the lines. So we're dividing the total height uh, by the number of lines we have and then starting um, 
uh, oh, sorry, multiplying that whole thing by which line we are. Uh, our height is the height up there, the width is the one we've set, uh, and we just need a color. So um, our paddles are white. Let's just set that at the moment to be white. Um, I think we might change that a bit later as well. Okay, and it's not drawing just because I haven't called the draw, so maybe maybe we can do that. So I'm just gonna call this in our loop after we clear the screen. So say this dot new dot draw. Okay. Um, and that's looking good. Um, I might tweak these a little bit just because um, the pals are quite big compared to that line, so I might make that a little bit wider. Um, okay, maybe try 15. Cool, that's good, and maybe a little bit taller just to fill in the gaps more. Cool, that looks a bit nicer. So uh, I think that's gonna be it for this session. So there's a few more things left to do. Uh, it'd be nice to have the scores recorded. Um, I mentioned as well, that we can definitely smarten up this opponent in a future episode. Uh, and then maybe we can finish by having like a nice title screen and um, the first to a certain number. So once you get to five, then it has that game over screen um, and shows who's won. But Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the session. All of the code that you saw today, as well as the sound clips are available on GitHub. I'll post the link in the description below. So go check that out. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a um, thumb, thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much. See you next time.